what are some of the things that young men and even women can engage in your opinion lacking a, a tribal structure or a well-structured rite of passage ceremony that still give us the opportunity to get some form of legitimate feedback self-reflection and ultimately can serve if not as an entire rite of passage as a component of a rite of passage for example there's things that you're going to learn in the rite of passage of combat of sports mm -hmm. but you won't learn them for example you won't learn negotiation skills you won't learn communication skills you might learn how to kick some ass and how to take some pain but you won't learn how to get along with your wife better right and as i often say i don't i don't care if you squat a thousand pounds if you can't get along with your wife because you've just wasted a lot of time in the gym that you should have been in learning mm -hmm. relationship skills so that's just a waste of time um any suggestions from you on options for young men out there absolutely i, I mean i think bringing it kind of full circle anything that pushes you to find those edges that we that we spoke about it would yeah. be would be pretty sufficient and that again can be a, a number of things right i mean something like combat sports like wrestling will do that um any kind of really long endurance feat can do that yes essentially what you're looking for and this has been again my experience is you know we consist of mind body and spirit right yes and you know, to to really delve into the mind, you have to kind of remove the body from from the equation, right? And you can do that through really hard effort, really long effort. Your body breaks down. It doesn't want to go anymore. And the only thing that's left to drive you is your mind and your mental state. And your mind can push your body to continue doing the thing. Well, on a long enough timeline, that mind starts to give way too. You know, when you're in hour six, or hour eight or whatever, you know, of your endurance feed, or, you know, maybe you're in a sweat lodge and it, you know, man, your, your body wanted to quit, your mind kept going and now it's so hot or, you know, something along those lines, it's really pushing those limits, right? Once the mind gives way, the only thing that's hanging on at that point is now your spirit. So you have to strip away the body, strip away the mind, and now you can get to the essence in that spirit and really see, okay, what what am I made of? Who am I at my core? What am I? What can I handle? And you know, you ha start to have some real conversations with yourself. Uh, and I think that <laughs> and God. that's and God and and you know anything that can safely and responsibly get you to that point, I think is a good rite of passage. You know, I wouldn't recommend it for young boys, but I think for a lot of men who have matured. Um, into adulthood, but they're still seeking that. Obviously, you know, plant medicine can be, it's not for everyone. I don't necessarily say you have to go that route, but that is an option as well. I and mean, a lot of people have, you know, been able to remove their mind and body through the use of, you know, plant medicines and ceremonies in that. Not obviously not in a recreational, hey, let's just do this and get weird, but in a very controlled environment, that's another great you know, method, not, not for kids, but for, you know, adult men who maybe never got that rite of pa passage and are looking for something, but can't physically take their first MMA fight, or they can't go do, you know, a, a 24 hour ultra marathon kind of experience. I think when you're old enough to start entertaining, stealing your mother's car, you're old enough to start entering a rite of passage. Yeah. I think that's fair. Right. Think, when, yeah. When, when you're, when you're at the age, you have adult responsibilities, but you're avoiding the adult part of the responsibility and you're starting to deal in illusions to feed that instant gratification without realizing the ramifications of a 4,000 pound machine going too fast. It's time for you to enter a rite of passage in an environment where you're not going to get yourself or other people killed. Yeah. And, you know, young men, when their testosterone kicks in, they start getting wild and crazy and they think they're supermen and they don't realize how perishable they are and other people and life itself is. Mm -hmm. And so and I, I really think that personally, that once a young man goes through puberty, that's when it's really important for a father to begin to keep a, an eagle's eye on how that mind is processing reality 
Yeah. Because once you add testosterone to a child's mind, you have problems because they are at that dangerous knife's edge where they start dabbling in the use of knives, weapons, fire, mm -hmm. um, explosives, whatever they can get their hands on, you know, and, and emulating men without being men. And that's right. when Which... limbs get lost, eyes get lost, bones get broken, death happens. And, and it's important that we don't, and this is part of the problem with society, that we don't coddle them and, and you know, bubble wrap them and insulate them from those things. No, right? we that's, don't, we that's don't, also a problem. You know, we can't just remove all sense of danger and say, okay, well, now they'll be fine because you can't do that. You can maybe do that in a closed environment, but in the open world, you know, danger is, is real and present at all times. And so that's where that guidance is is so vital where you have you know and it's not just the father it's it's the tribe it's the leaders of the tribe it's not just one guy you know it takes a no, village I'm just, you know it's you our, gotta it's have our culture though our culture yes. is broken we don't have a tribal culture so we've got this monogamous unit and i think that's a danger of monogamy is it kills the tribal concept and i you know you know i have two wives and, mm -hmm. and we forever are are saying wow, you know, these kids really get a lot more love support and it's easier on both women, it's easier on me because I can't subscribe to something that isn't true to my heart. And I also have studied tribal society so much. And there's a saying, it takes a tribe to raise a child and that's damn true. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things because men keep getting caught in the pursuit of money and so what happens is, and I did this with my first wife, I was just hell bent for leather to make more money and, and advance my career. So she was isolated having to raise our son by herself. And that's how women get completely burned out. Yep. That's how they get, they feel unloved by their partner. And it's really this paradox because the man thinks he's doing what he should be doing to protect the family, but forgets that money doesn't equal love it doesn't mm -hmm. equal nurture it doesn't equal education so it's a it's a we, we've got this sort of industrialized corporatized monotheistic mono orientation toward the family and i think it's really put us in a lot of trouble led to a lot of drug use a lot of chronic ailments and diseases and burnout for men and women and i think i think one of the things we've got to do for ourselves as adults and for young men is we've got to start working with the concept of tribe to bring people that have common mission, vision, and values. And I've rehabilitated countless burned out women. Mm -hmm. And I say, look, you've got to create a tribe. What does that mean? It means if, if you haven't got time to go to an aerobics class or to do something that's nourishing for you, to help you have a sense of yourself and not be completely and utterly obliterated by the responsibility of being a parent, find another woman in the same situation as you, and you say, okay, Mondays, you <laughs> bring your kid to me. Well, you go for two hours to the beauty salon or mm -hmm. to read or to the swimming pool or to the jazzercise or to the aerobics or to the gym, and Wednesday, I bring my kid to you, and you get a bunch of people together that all need that support and that's the use of the tribal awareness and the tribal concept, which is, it's it's way overdue. It really is. And I mean, you 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 said the word, it's isolation. And we have, yeah. you know, in our society, we have isolated ourselves, you know, to, to a really bad place and, and to the detriment of everyone involved where, and, and, you know, I think men are guilty of this, I think a lot because we don't want to ask for help. Right. Again, that pride thing comes in and, you know, maybe, or we don't know anyone that we can ask for help. We don't know where to find someone. Who, who do we even go to? You know, maybe I'm fairly adept at, at doing certain things, but man, I don't, I look around and I can't find another guy who's, you know, got a pot to piss in, you know, and is, is worth, a, is worth a damn. So what do I, what do I do there? And I think that's a challenge. The work thing that you mentioned is a big issue where you're living in two different separate realities where the wife is drowning right in, in, 
And then the husband is also drowning. He just doesn't realize it because he thinks he's been, you know, led to believe that he's doing the right thing by, you know, working 40, 50, 60, 80 hours a week in a, in a hunter gatherer society. I, I think that they said it's the, the average amount of work a person would do in a week to survive in that about 15 to 20 hours. Yeah, work. the research shows you can look at the book Metabolic Man 10,000 Years from Eden by okay. um, by Charles Heiser Worthen, who mm -hmm. did extensive research on this. He showed the average tribal society could meet their basic needs in three and a half to four hours a day. There you and go. The young, the young parents and adults went out and did the hunting and gathering while the grandparents, the wise ones, educated the children. And then when the parents came home, they did arts, crafts, sang, danced, mm -hmm. played, and lived for the rest of the day. Yeah. So we've got the whole thing completely fucking inverted. Oh, yeah. No, it's, 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 I mean, it's a really messed up system. And I think people are so, have become so indoctrinated, like, well, this is just the way that it is. Like, they can't see, they can't conceive any other way of existing. And so I think as parents, we need to recognize, like, hey, We've got to we've got to start shifting our mindset and our mentality, and that doesn't mean everyone can just go quit their jobs, you know, and just be a bunch of you know hippies living in a commune in the woods. Although, you know, I'm not saying you can't do that either, but at the same time, you know, this this community, this tribe, we need to be finding ways to build that and finding ways to yes meet our needs and and provide and put food on the table. But as men, providing is so much more than monetary value. Like you said, we provide love, we provide protection, support, we provide knowledge and inspiration. We provide order to to our realm, you know, to our our little kingdom, our house that we live in. You know, my job as a dad is like when everything is falling to shit and everything is going crazy, like I can't just I can't lose it. I have to be the one that holds it together and keeps the the wheels on the track. Otherwise, it all falls apart. And if I if I put that responsibility solely on my wife because I'm too focused on my job and she has to manage every aspect of everything, like you said, she's going to burn out. And now I've just I've just you know paralyzed my partner. I, I had a partner in this thing. I had a I had a teammate, and I just freaking kneecapped him because I I'm off pursuing something that I thought was good, but it actually has been. It's, it's the source of most of my problems. And I, I can say this, that I've learned it the hard way, is we have such an egocentric culture that men have a hard time making the transition from I to we. And, and there's the old saying, there is no I and we. So once you're in a relationship, you have a partner, you have kids, it's very important for a man to learn to navigate his personal needs and his own dreams, goals, desires, and professional pursuits, but also say, what is it that my wife needs? What is it that my kids need? And how can I make that transition so I feed myself enough to be whole, but I don't lose sight of the relationship? Because without the relationship, I'm really not a man in the relationship if I don't meet the requirements of a healthy relationship. Yep. 